I'm talking about car forwarding systems on this Ops 101 edition of Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more model railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure and subscribe down below and click the little bell icon so you can catch future videos. I want to welcome you to another Model Railroad Ops 101 video. In this series, I'm talking about the principles and procedures that can help you develop an operating scheme for your layout that is prototypical, fun, and that it's just right for you and your layout and your operating crew. Today, I'm going to be talking about one of two principles that are absolutely foundational for an understanding of railroad operations and good model railroad operations. The first of those principles is the principle of track authority or train authority. That is the system by which trains are given permission to occupy and move along the tracks on a railroad. I made a video previously on this particular topic, and you can find it in my Ops 101 playlist, which I'll link at the end of this video. Today I'm talking about the second of those principles, which is the principle of car forwarding. Car forwarding is the system by which we move freight cars around our layout in a way that is prototypical, in a way that is logical, and a way that is both efficient and safe. When you first got into model railroading, it's a pretty good bet that you probably had a circle or a loop of track, maybe a, a few sidings and some industries to switch, but without a lot of knowledge of how railroads work, uh, it's easy to just switch cars randomly in and out of those industries without a lot of rhyme or reason as to what cars go where and when and why. Well, as we progress in our understanding of railroading and in the operations for model railroading, we learn that we want to make things a little more prototypical, and so we want more logic, more reason for which cars go where at what times and why they belong in those places. And that's what car forwarding is all about. Now, I want to say from the beginning today that the list I'm going to give you today of different systems for car forwarding is not exhaustive by any means. In fact, it's a short list of some of the most popular schemes that have been used over time and that are used today, and it also represents a variety of schemes that can be useful on a variety of types and styles and sizes of layouts. So from this list, you're going to probably find something that you can adapt that'll work just right for your layout and your operating crew. Now, before we develop an operating system, we need to have some idea of what cars we need on our layout. In order to do that, we need to begin by doing what I call a traffic pattern analysis. A traffic pattern analysis is a survey of our layout, the various industries and tracks on our layout, wherever freight cars are routed. And as we do that survey, and as we think about the industries on our layout, we're thinking about the types of commodities that those industries both ship and receive. We're thinking about the types of cars that they need in order to transport those various commodities. We're also thinking about the number of spots that we have at those industries, as well as in yard tracks on the layout and off the layout in staging. Now, I'm going to be doing a entire video on doing a traffic pattern analysis, and I'm going to include it in this playlist in this series. If I've made that video, you'll see it at the uh, in the playlist at the end of the video. Until that time, you'll find an overview of how I do my traffic pattern analysis in the video that I've previously done on setting up car cards, and I'm going to include a link to it in a card a little bit later in the video so you can see that. So with all of that said, let me tell you about four different basic systems of car forwarding for helping to move cars logically and prototypically around our layout. The first and the simplest is what I call car in, car out. In this system, we've made a decision in advance as to what types of cars go at a particular industry, and the owner stages trains in advance of an operating session with the right cars in the trains that allow train crews to run their trains and simply replace cars at industry with the same number and types of cars from the train uh, that they are, are working. 
So in other words, if they come to an industry and it has one boxcar that needs to be pulled, they will replace it with one boxcar from their train. If it has three covered hoppers that are to be pulled, they, the train crew will replace those with three covered hoppers from their trains. This is a very simple style of, of car forwarding, but, but it gets the job done if our goal is to move quickly into operations. It also works very well for smaller layouts or layouts with owners who don't want to get too deep and too bogged down in the paperwork that can come sometimes with other styles of car forwarding systems. Car in, car out is a simple but effective way of doing car forwarding on our layouts. Another system that is very simple and very easy to use, and that was very popular in the past, is what I would call car tabs. Car tabs are color-coded stickers, or in some cases, push pins that are placed in the roofs or the tops of pieces of rolling stock in, in holes for the, for the push pins or, or stickers that are simply placed. And each color of pin or sticker represents a particular location on the layout. Uh, this can be used easily on small layouts and each color can represent an industry or on larger layouts each colored pin or sticker will be accompanied by a letter or a number code that will represent a particular industry thus the number in a particular town thus the color this allows train crews to see exactly where each car is going to be going where its destination is even as it is rolling down the track now, the drawback to this particular type of system is the fact that the stickers or the push pins do detract some from the prototypical look of our otherwise nice model railroad models uh, that we build and that we run uh, on our tracks. But it is also, it can be an efficient way of doing car forwarding, of knowing exactly where cars are going. Again, this particular system requires the owner to stage trains in advance, knowing uh, what cars need to go where, and uh, also the system system is set up that, that shows what cars are then being pulled uh, and replaced by the cars within the trains. Now those two systems are some, some good systems for moving cars around our layout, but, but the last two systems I want to talk about are a little more prototypical in nature. Uh, the next one I want to, to think about is the use of switch lists as ways of moving cars around the layout. Now, switch lists are a list of cars that need to be pulled as well as cars in our trains that need to be spotted and they tell the train crew exactly what work needs to be done. From a train crew perspective, switch lists are very realistic. They're very prototypical. Real train crews typically work from switch lists that tell them at each town, at each industry, which cars need to be pulled, which cars from their train need to be spotted. Now, there are a couple different ways that we can do switch lists. Uh, we can do handwritten switch lists, which again are, are fairly fr prototypical depending on the era in which you're working. And in this case, we have an owner that makes up trains and stages them in advance of the layout and also writes out, hand writes switch lists for the train crews that tells them what work they're to do and what cars they're to pull and what cars they're to spot. In some cases, if great care is taken, these switch lists can be laminated and reused assuming cars get to the places they're supposed to be and the trains end up in the places uh, they're supposed to be made up as they should be made up. Then a series of switch lists can be cycled through uh, various operating sessions and can be reused. In addition to handwritten switch lists, we can also use computer generated switch lists using programs like JMRI. In this case, we have a piece of computer software that has a list of all of our rolling stock within the software, and the software knows what kinds of commodities that particular type of rolling stock can carry, what industries may need those cars to receive or to ship that kind of, of goods, and then the software, knowing how many spots are at each industry and also knowing where the cars are supposed to be on the layout will generate a switch list randomly that assigns cars in staging or cars uh, that, that are waiting to come to spots on the layout into trains to be taken and spotted. And it also assigns cars within industries to be pulled. 
Now, this kind of a automated car forwarding system has its advantages and its disadvantages. The primary disadvantage, in my personal opinion, is the fact that sometimes operators make mistakes, which means sometimes cars get to places where they're not supposed to be. And with a, a an automated system, if a car is not where the system knows it should be, uh, then it's not going to get into the train that it, it's assigned to, and you end up with uh, all kinds of a, of a mess. However, if we're very, very careful to make sure that cars get where they belong, and we do careful surveys between operating sessions to know that cars are where they belong. Uh, systems like this using JMRI or other software can be a great way of randomly moving cars around our layout that, that can avoid repetition, especially on larger layouts. Now the final car forwarding system I want to talk about is what I think is probably the most popular over time uh, in the last decades, or at least as long as I've been involved in model railroading, and that is car cards and waybills. Car cards are a card with a pocket, and each car matches or represents one particular freight car on our layout. And within the pocket on the car card, we place a two-cycle or a four-cycle way bill, which describes where a car is coming from, where it is headed to, and what type of commodity it is carrying. With these cycled way bills, we can cycle cars around our layout, with a four cycle way bill, we have four different destinations that the car can be moved from and to in four different operating sessions. And if we want greater variety than that, then we can always replace those way bills whenever they come up and complete the fourth cycle. Now, we just talked about switch lists, and I want you to understand that while switch lists can be a way of car forwarding uh, all by themselves, they can also be used in conjunction with car cards and way bills. In fact, one of my favorite ways to operate as far as a car forwarding system is concerned is using car cards and way bills, which are prototypical from a shipper standpoint, and switch lists, which are prototypical from a train crew standpoint, and multiple person train crews, where one person is serving as the engineer actually running the throttle, the other person is serving as the conductor, and thus will take the way bills, will make up a switch list that then is used in the process of the operating session itself. Now previously I did an entire video on setting up operations specifically using car cards and way bills. And also in that same video is that summary of how to do a traffic pattern analysis that I mentioned earlier. And if you'd like to check that video out, you're going to find it in a card in the corner of your screen right here. You can go uh, watch that video. I think you'll find it interesting. Now if you enjoyed this video on car forwarding systems, I want to encourage you to check out the whole playlist on Operations 101 in this card in the corner of your screen right now. And be sure and check out the description down below where you're going to find my Micromark promo code that can save you 10% on regularly priced items at micromark.com, as well as my Amazon page and my Amazon pick of the week and lots of other great links. Be sure and take a look at the description before you go. Well, hey, be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you more great model railroad segments and more Operations 101, and I look forward to seeing you then. Ten, Lizzie?